Hey everybody, Dave and Ann here. Um, today we just wanted to take a few minutes and um, talk about a term that you've probably been hearing a lot about lately. Uh, it's called forbearance, and you know it's come up because of the the COVID crisis that we're in and people not being able to pay their bills and their mortgage in in particular. So we want to welcome Jim Iyer from Evergreen Home Loans. He's the home loan man. And uh, he's going to walk us through the whole issue. So, Jim, first of all, what is forbearance? Before I answer that, let me just say I want to thank you guys for actually doing this because I think the more that the real estate industry and the more that the mortgage industry can bring truth out there to the marketplace, the better off everyone is going to be. So I really appreciate the opportunity to do this with you today. You're welcome. And to actually answer your question, forbearance has been around for decades. And it's simply put, it's just a plan that lenders will use. Uh, and it may vary somewhat from lender to lender in the past, but it enables borrowers to make up delinquent payments that they have, plus other uh, things like late fees, collection charges, and so forth, uh, over a period of time and bring themselves back to current on their mortgage and allow them to keep and enjoy and stay living in their homes. Um, the current version though is different. Uh, the one that everybody's talking about is what's described in the CARES Act or the COVID, excuse me, Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. And it's a little different. So let me just give you sort of a scenario and describe how it would work. And, and, and that may be the best way to describe it. Okay. Okay. Let's say that a couple uh, has had their home for a while and they've gone three months delinquent in their mortgage payments for whatever reason. A lender might uh, say, okay, we're gonna take that three months delinquency and we're going to divide that out over six months. So once you have entered into the forbearance plan, they would take that six, that three months arrearage and add to it late fees and so on, plus any forced place insurance on the home and come up with a total amount that they would just, just call the arrearage and then divide that over the period of months that the forbearance plan was going to be in effect. So the borrowers would in essence have to make their regular mortgage payment plus whatever that even portion of the total arrearage is each month over the period of time the forbearance plan was in effect. So they might be making, for instance, a payment and a half over six months to catch up for a three month total arrearage. Yeah. Under the total, uh, under, under the uh, new plan, it doesn't work that way. You, all the borrower has to do is call the lender and say, hey, I'm having difficulties due to the COVID-19 stuff that's going on in the world and I would like to enter into a forbearance plan. Uh, also under the current plan, the uh, borrowers are not required to provide any sort of documentation to prove that they're experiencing financial difficulties. The lender just is supposed to take their word for it and they can get up to a six month forbearance plan. Now, during that time, there are no additional fees added on, no late fees, no collection fees, nothing like that. And uh, the, there is also no negative credit reporting, which is one of the beauties of the current plan because this COVID-19 virus thing is something that was, it's not under anybody's control. It's just a phenomenon that's affecting the world. And so uh, they didn't want people to be negatively affected with that credit wise. So, um, so when this first came out, they, we were hearing that people would have to come up with this balloon payment at the end of the six months. And the big question was, well, I haven't been working for the past six months, so how am I supposed to come up with this balloon right. payment? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's well, that's kind of the million dollar question. Um, of course, under this CARES Act, borrowers are encouraged to make you know, full or partial payments anytime they can. If family steps in to help, go ahead and pay it against the mortgage. If you get your economic relief check in the mail, go ahead and pay that towards your mortgage payment. And all of that money, if there's any of it, that a borrower pays during the forbearance period of time goes into what's called a suspense account. It does not actually apply to the mortgage right then and there. And it doesn't apply to the mortgage at all until the forbearance plan 
is done time-wise. Now, at the end of the forbearance plan under the CARES Act, borrowers are supposed to cure the entire arrearage uh, or everything that they're delinquent on right then and there in a balloon payment. But of course, that's the difficulty. Right. Otherwise, borrowers wouldn't be going into forbearance. Right. right. So, so what happens if those borrowers, they, they can't come up with that money? Well, the, there's sort of a multi-pronged uh, answer to that day, but it's a really good question. Uh, the the uh, second portion is, of that is they can apply for a, another six-month extension of the forbearance plan. And usually that's just gratis. You don't have to provide any sort of documentation for that at all. Mm -hmm. And if at the end of that time they can't make uh, up the total arrearage, then what's going to happen is they would need to apply for a modification or a loan modification, just as we had many borrowers doing across the country during the mortgage meltdown. 2009, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And if they get to that point, lenders are going to require documentation of what's going on in their lives. And really in essence mean that means that the borrowers are gonna to have to reapply for the loan all over again. Wow. wow. Pay stubs, tax returns, whatever documentation the lender requests. Assuming it is approved by the lender, the lender can then decide to go into a loan modification agreement. However, once a borrower goes into a loan modification, late fees and negative credit reporting start up again. All that little grace period in terms of fees and no negative reporting ends right then and there. Wow. Okay, so say I have a mortgage, I've applied for and gotten forbearance, mm -hmm. I'm still in the I haven't paid it off period, but I need to sell my home and buy another one. Is that going to affect how lenders look at me when I'm applying for a loan? Okay. If you are selling your home and you time the closing of that sale during or right at the end of the um, forbearance period, since there's no negative credit reporting during that time, then there wouldn't be any negative uh, credit showing on their on the seller's credit report moving forward. So they could go out and, and, and apply for an apartment or a new home mortgage on a new home, and they should be okay in that regard. Or at least that's way, the way that the structure of the act is intended. It still remains to be seen if that's gonna work out that way. However, if, if it's beyond the forbearance period and you're into the loan modification period of time, then there will be negative credit reporting and the borrower is going to have to deal with that just like anyone else applying for, you know, a, a, a rental agreement or a new mortgage. The lender will have to deal with that with the borrowers individually. Wow. Yeah. Sounds uh, like it can Tricky. be can really complicated. <laughs> so I, I would, what we've heard is that if you don't need to use forbearance and you can continue to pay your mortgage payments then continue to do that right um rather than just go oh i can just skip out you know i don't have to pay my mortgage for the next three months i mean if, if, you, if you have to then do it but if you don't have to just stay with the, the program you're currently in is that absolutely is that right? that's exactly what i would recommend dave if, if you can make the mortgage payment make the mortgage payment because when we come out of all of this, you'll be better off in the end. Right. Well, great. Okay. Thanks great. for answering our questions on forbearance today. Jim Iyer, the home loan guy from Evergreen Home Loans. Yeah. And if you guys, if you have any kind of questions, um, feel free to reach out to Ann and I or Jim. Uh, we'll, we'll include Jim's info in this, uh, in this email so you can reach out to him directly. And between the three of us, we'll answer any kind of questions that you have, so. Absolutely. The more information a customer can have, the better off they're gonna be. Exactly. Great. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thanks.